Hello, Andy from Chrome Graph here, and uh, I'm just going to talk about in today's short video two features of the brand new Lightroom 13 update which just dropped yesterday. Uh, they are amazing features, but there is quite a big reason why you might not want to update at this point or even revert to an earlier issue of Lightroom. OK, let's get to it. Right, so in my first example, I'm going to show you how you get from the picture on the left to the picture on the right with only four steps, just four steps. So I'm going to talk about the remarkable new um, lens blur feature that mimics the effect of a very wide aperture lens on any shot. So let's look at the picture we're going to discussed today taken using this camera the Fuji X-T2 at this setting of f8 the shutter speed was 1 400th of a second ISO 400 in good daylight um, autofocus on object in the picture the motorcycle very clear it's ideally suited for this type of application so how did I get from image on the left to the image on the right well, just four steps. This image is the final version. This image is the unedited. Let's go into the develop module and quickly look at the new feature. So we have a slightly different look to the control panel and, and that's probably the subject for another video. But looking at it, we can see that we've now got, as well as color grading, for example, we also have the lens correction features, uh, which we've always had for a while, but we've got the lens blur, which has got an early access warning sticker next to it. So that tells us it may not be completely finished yet. Um, but we'll go to that in a minute. So what we're just going to start off with is the basic settings on this. So now the auto button for tone and so forth has moved to here. This will be the same for all cameras. So that immediately transforms the image to one which is more usable. So the slightly dark subject is um, now relatively visible. We won't do any more corrections at this stage. Next step is to apply a crop to your satisfaction. So that makes to me a little bit more satisfying image we've lost some of the uh, background details but we still got the main elements which is the, the guy on the bike the other guy coming out the park and the people relaxing behind in the shade on this very hot day so the next stage we go to applying the lens blur and this brings up a brand new panel and at the moment it's completely grayed out because it's not actually done anything so the first thing you do is tick the box that says apply that brings up the next window which says analyzing and and then that fills in the rest of the panel so we've got bokeh options here so that's normal bokeh is the one I've selected I'm going to, have to leave it oh no let's change it to um, uh, pentagonal which is a, an old style uh, gives it perhaps a, a slightly more vintage look but on this image you probably won't notice except for fact if you look at these here you can see um, uh, the, the slight pentagonal out of focus highlights. You've got a, a range to change the focal length. So I'm not going to do that, but I'll click the visualize depth box, which will give you an indication of the orange bits, basically saying what's in focus. And there's an option to give feedback on how it's working. I'm not also going to change the blur amount because actually that's pretty much bang on what I want um, and you can also have a boost setting and there's another option here so that gives you ability to shift the point of focus if you like okay so that's that work pretty well and the final option uh, is simply to uh, apply a little bit of a vignette yeah just highlights that person on the bike even more and there you are Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt that's a picture edited now I know it's not a complete edit of course but it does give you an idea of how it works main disadvantage is speed of operation 
Okay, so the next example is the uh, point color uh, mixer. We have either the normal controls, hue, saturation, illumination, that affects all the um, areas of the image. The point color is a little bit more fancy. So just take you through how I've edited this image. So again, it's nothing fancy. We'll just go to auto settings, uh, then adjust the white balance, slight change of the tint because this is a Fuji, uh, crop the image to something a little bit more suitable for your own likes, and then we start doing the point color. So you use the eyedropper to select a point on the image, and in this case I'm going to go for one of the highlights on the trees. This main interest to me on this image is the light coming through from the side, just highlighting the, the trees. So that then lights up this panel and we can add a bit of something. As you can see this is affecting the saturation, the hue shift slider down here is um, being affected. Then we've got the luminance as well, so we can make it really bright, obviously obnoxiously bright. You can see where it's affecting the other trees here, so just a little bit of um, pop to them. And you can also change the range, and you can see how that starts to affect the rest of the image. If there's nothing in it, it's only very specific, up to 100, and obviously it's pretty much everything. You can visualize the range like this. So a pretty accurate tool, again, would be very useful for certain people. And there you are, that's pretty much it for that. So that's two tools that are going to be very useful to certain groups of people doing photography. I can certainly imagine myself using it in quite a few situations, but I think people like wedding photographers, portrait photographers, anybody who needs some precise control over uh, where the lens is focused and uh, how colours are represented. But this is not a, um, a systematic review of these things. It doesn't go into colour theory and all the other bits and pieces which you may need if you're going to be really using it a lot. So I think these, these are great. Uh, I think the main disadvantage is the speed of execution, certainly of the um, lens blur on my intel based mac it's fairly slow so you wouldn't be using it for every picture for sure but for those ones which you need it definitely going to work well and uh, for faster silicon max no doubt it will work pretty good and i'm sure it'll it'll speed up when the uh, final uh, version is released by adobe at the moment it's uh, pretty much a, almost a, like a beta feature uh, now then got to add a word of warning which is that if you're using plugins and you're very dependent on them for your workflow you know if you specialize in certain things for example i use something called negative lab pro uh, and that converts analog scan pictures or DLS LR scanned pictures into something you can actually use uh, and that does not work with this update now I'm sure Adobe are going to correct it Nate at uh, Negative Lab Pro is well aware of what's going on um, but there may well be other plugins that you use and if you're dependent on them you may well want to not upgrade or go back to version 12.5 of Lightroom um, that's done through the Adobe panel and uh, it's quite easy to do but bear in mind once you've started making a, a corrections in the new version of Adobe you'll lose them if you go back to the old version because it creates a new library to take account of the new features. So a bit of a health warning be cautious if you're dependent on external plugins otherwise it looks like it's working okay there are a range of other updates and changes some of them which aren't really documented at the moment I'm sure people will be putting up videos and reviews and something I'm just a, a user of Lightroom I'm not an expert but I have been using the program a long time okay so that's it from me thank you very much for watching this little uh, Lightroom 13 update I hope that's benefited you in some way all comments feedback critique etc well very welcome just keep it polite okay and don't forget if you like this video please like comment and subscribe that keeps this channel going oh and pop on over to my patreon if you want some expanded content bye for now